you know what it is to hit that peak of excellence in your career, yeah. make all this money, and then have to go back to work again? This sucks. Yeah. You yeah. got to have it some willpower and say, okay, let me think this through. Hey there, I am Dr. Jason Ballara, and this is the Know Your Why podcast, where we explore the why behind success. Every week, I meet with real estate investors, veterinary entrepreneurs, mindset coaches, authors, and fitness professionals to uncover their why and how it drives them on the winding road to success. What is your why? Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Ballara, and this is the Know Your Why podcast. Today, I'm here with Max Lewis. Max went from average Joe to the top 1%. He beat the odds and became one of America's ultra high net worth individuals. Uh, this was through perseverance, hard work, and willingness to learn from his mistakes. So, Max, I I'm really excited uh, to hear your story, share it with the listeners. But first, let me just say thank you for coming on the show today. I, I appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. My pleasure. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to uh, spending some time with you. Get awesome. To know you as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's just start with, with that. Let's hear your background. Let's kind of hear about this journey and, and uh, let the listeners kind of know, know a bit about you. Cool. So basically, um, started off as a young boy in Miami. My father taught me some financial lessons with uh, mangoes, selling mangoes, which then evolved to candy. Then I got into washing cars, which I learned was very difficult, hard work. And uh, ultimately, that led to an opportunity uh, while I was filling propane tanks, actually working for my father. He had a little propane station, and he gave me an opportunity to, to work on the weekends for him filling propane tanks instead of washing cars, which was a lot easier. Uh, I'd get the same pay, which I believe at that time was like 65 bucks a day. Um, a guy comes in one day, and he wants all these propane tanks delivered to his place of business, which no one did that at the time, at least not in our region. And, you know, I told him, no, nobody does that. He came back a handful of times. And um, long story short, I identified the opportunity, charged him a little bit more money. He gave me his business. And that led to fast forward just maybe three months forward from that point. I was making $3,000 a day. Right. This was obviously a service. This was solving a problem that uh, people needed solved, and um, just continued to evolve the business, grow the business. I started putting those uh, cages in the gas stations. I'm not sure if you know what those are. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I think I hear some noise here in the background. Give me one second. Okay. Sorry. Anyhow. Right. So the, um, I started putting those gas station cages and then in supermarkets and then in hardware stores. And then we started doing forklift gas. I, I grew the business from one customer to the largest independently operated propane exchange business in the state of Florida. Um, that took some time, took some effort. There was a lot of learning curves. I obviously, uh, I never ended up going to college. I learned, as they would say, the hard way. But uh, it was an interesting and a very fun journey and ultimately sold the business for $37 million by 36, which is when I, you know, semi-retired. I'm still a businessman. I still do things, but no job. No job for, it's been almost seven years now. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's great. That's great. It, it's a, it's interesting, um, you know, certainly an interesting journey. And I love that you're, you said you know, that your father gave you, gave you the opportunity to work there. And, and uh, I, thought, I think a lot of people look at, you know, work as um, something that has to be done, has, you know, but, but maybe approaching, approaching it as an opportunity is what allowed you to create, essentially create a, an entire business out of it that obviously you were able to, you were able to then um, sell very profitably at the end. And it, it's just, um, I think so, something to, to, for people to think about, you know, kind of when you're looking about at what you're doing, there are always opportunities around you and, and, yeah. you know, sort of the willingness to take them, I think is really important. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about just what you did to kind of grow and scale that company, some of the process you put in place. I mean, I think, you know, from, from going from 
one customer to a thirty-seven million dollar exit is is there was probably something that happened in between there that was uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you had know, to build and yeah. make it a saleable company. So yeah. so tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely, and you know that's I never had it as a goal to write a book. My friends, the people, and my family, the ones that knew my journey are the ones that kept insisting that I write a book just for that very reason, right? They're like, how the yeah. hell did you do this? Right? Like, cause they knew me, right? They did this, some guy I used to work at a car wash. And then next thing you know, I have this huge company before I sold the company, I was profiting a little bit over $3 million a year. I had around uh, 70 employees, you know, it was massive business. Everybody knew my company by the time I sold it. So, you know, that's, that's the point of the book. The book is one part, my story. Another part is a practical workbook, which is, showing and teaching the reader as I, I detail the steps. It's really cool. A guy told me actually yesterday, he's like, man, you know, your book is my favorite book because you actually say, this is where I was at. And these are the things that I did right in mm -hmm. pure detail, but I'm going to try to fill in with the time we have here today to try to give you some of that. It's 416 page book, but, right. <laughs> right. it down for you. but um, so let's say, um, so early on, after I started doing these deliveries to these people and making this money, um, one of my first challenges was one of the things that I learned the hard way. Again, I started hiring friends. I started hiring friends, whoever is available to help me, which I think a lot of people do. Young entrepreneurs do they, whoever's around their cousin, mm -hmm. their sister, whoever is available. Hey, you want to partner with me? You want to work for me? Right. Um, I learned that's often not the best course of action when starting a business. And let me explain why and what I learned in that process. What I learned is when you're hiring someone, when you're trying to evolve or grow your business, um, you need to hire the right person for the job. And mm -hmm. you need to create uh, essentially a job description for whatever it is you're hiring someone for, and then hire the person that fits into that mold, not, not, hire someone, then try to train them into the mold, you know, like, and, and that's something that, man, I, I would have sold it for 70, $77 million if I would have learned that, you know, yeah. 10 years before. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the things that I learned. I learned that all problems have solutions, but when you're faced with that adversity, with that, um, you, you know, that unknowing, like, I don't know how to get past this, this hurdle it feels very, um, it's like really dramatic, you know, you're like, Oh my God, I'm at the end. Forget it. I'm a failure. This sucks. I'm never going to get past this, but you know, that's really like short term thinking. And yeah. if you can master those emotions and just be like, okay, there's an issue. There is a solution. I guarantee there's a solution. There's people walking on the moon and Bluetooth and cell phones exist, which is like, right. you had to invent a cell phone yourself. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it. It's like there's solutions for these problems. Um, so that's another important lesson that I learned when I started dealing with challenges is, you know what, let's always look for the solution. Let's be solution oriented. And, um, you know, that helped me greatly in my journey. And a lot of times, and I think with a lot of successful people, they'll tell you they face challenges and the solutions come in the, in the most unexpected ways or from the most unexpected people. Right. And you don't necessarily need a college education to be successful. What you need to be is persistent and, and determined and not give up in whatever it is that your intent is. You also need to be very focused and clear on what it is that you're trying to achieve. You know, if our goal today was, I want a ham and cheese sandwich, I didn't reach my goal till I have a ham and cheese sandwich in my hand. Now, what do I need to do to get one? Well, there's a lot of things. I can order one. I could walk to the store. I could drive to the store. I could take my skateboard. I could call a friend to deliver me. You know, there's just so many ways to get to that goal. It's working through, okay, what are the different ways? And then what's going to be the best course of action for me to get to that objective, right? And that saves a lot of time. And that's one of the things I talk about in my book, something I learned from Keith Cunningham, who is a uh, the Real Rich Dad. I don't know if you know a book called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by sure. Robert Kiyosaki. Yep. Well, he, he, he didn't really have a rich dad. His rich dad, quote unquote, was Robert, uh, excuse me, was Keith Cunningham. And that's who I studied with. And he taught me the concept of thinking time, which is something that I've always done, but never did to the degree that he taught, which is 
really isolating yourself in a quiet space with, you know, notebook, pen and paper and starting with a quality question and working through that question slowly and methodically for up to an hour and just see what things come up, what answers, what potential solutions. And you just brainstorming, you know, brain dumping, you're writing all these things down, writing all these things on, writing all these things down and new questions will come up, new solutions will come up, new insights will come up. And by the time you're done with your thinking time, if you did it correctly, if you weren't distracted, if your phone was off, if your TV was off, if no one was bothering you, by the time you're done doing that, you look at your page and you're like, wow, there's a, quite a bit of things here, right? And then you mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm going to circle or highlight the top three things that are like, wow, you know, because there's always some wow. So I guarantee yeah. you, you can do it on anything and be like, wow, this is a really, damn, did I think of that? This is <laughs> Pat myself on the back. This is great. You know, so, and then you take action on those things. And then you take action on those things and you give yourself a timeline, you know? So if I'm going to put, let's say, top three things I learned, um, and then I'll say, I want to get this one done in a day, the other one done in three days, and the last one done within two weeks. And then here we are. We're already making our way towards uh, a solution. And then uh, along the way, you, you know, there's different things that you learn and different little obstacles or insights or opportunities and you just keep thinking how do i go how do i go so um specifically how did i get from one customer to 6500 which is what i had when i sold it's, it's i mean it's all in the, it's all the, i wouldn't be able to tell you it's just too much yeah yeah but yeah. those are the basic principles of what i used um and I was, I've always been very curious as well. You know, if you say a word that I don't understand or I don't know in this interview, I will write it down and I will undoubtedly Google that and, and ensure that I understand that word to the best of my ability before I get up from this chair, you know, and that kind of attitude I think has really, really helped me in achieving success. Cause if I, if I don't have something, if, if I don't know something, I do my absolute best. I put as much effort as I can into figuring it out and getting, you know, to my goal. You know? Yeah. I think those are all great. And I mean, you know, people can check out the book and you know, obviously we, <laughs> we can't read it to us here in, in this, uh, in this interview, but, but I think, you know, some really actionable things there and just that, you know, it's hiring for the specific need, uh, you know, and hiring someone that is qualified to fill that need, I think is, is certainly an important part of growing and scaling. And I think I, I love the, uh, you know, so solution oriented approach and, and just giving that time to brainstorm, you know, take whatever you want to call it, you know, just getting solutions out on paper and then putting a timeline on going ahead and, and um, executing those solutions. I think it is just, you know, hugely beneficial for people that are in business or what you know whatever they're trying to accomplish in life right like you probably apply those same principles right. especially that solution oriented brainstorming component you can apply that to just about anything any problem you might face it could be a relationship issue right like i'm struggling with anything. this relationship anything. what do i do okay i'm gonna you know sit sit in a room quiet room with uninterrupted and and write things down, put your thoughts on paper. So uh, I, I, I love that. I think that's a, a great way to kind of look at, <clears throat> again, whatever, whether that's business growth or, or um, you know, personal growth, it, it could be either. As it's you were- it's Let me interrupt you for one second. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. It is extremely powerful. And I would say it is the best tool in my arsenal. Yeah. To, to the point that I have in my cell phone, questions that are very thought provoking the hope and the book at the end of each chapter in the book you'll see like thought provoking questions based on what you read in the chapter but for my personal use i have probably 200 questions in my phone in my notes section and when i'm faced with something i look through the questions i'm like what is a good question for this problem mm -hmm. and i'll grab one two three of them and say i'm going to use this question to, to spark, you know, to provoke me into solving this 
you know, today, right now, I'm going to go sit down. It doesn't have to be an hour. It could be 20 minutes and go right. sit down for 20 minutes and work on this and see what I come up with. Think about how much better you do things when they're thought through. Taking yeah. action, I think is, is, is huge. Like nothing happens unless you take action. But if you take well thought out action, I mean, you, now you become, now it's, now you become someone's problem, right? Because like, man, this guy's a badass. Like, holy shit. Like everything was so well thought out. And it's like, yeah, and it could be, it could have been a 20 or 30 minute thinking session, not, yeah. you know, weeks or months of thinking. You just got to get smart on how you're attacking because just action, action, action. It, I think it's great. I think action is great, but at some point you need to stop and say, okay, what exactly do I need to accomplish my objective, my goal, whatever? And that's where the thinking time comes into play. So sorry, please continue. No, I, I love what you said there. Cause I, I think, uh, you know, this, maybe this a little bit, um, social media driven or something, but you know, there, there's a lot of talk, especially, you know, the business and real estate world about take action, take action, take action is a hundred percent true. You don't want to get stuck in the analysis paralysis phase, mm -hmm. but at the same time, taking misguided or, or undirected action is, is, can get you in just as much trouble. So I think it, it's, uh, you know, formulating your plan. And again, like you said, it might be a 20 minute <laughs> session yep. of thinking, of, you know, how to solve this problem, but just, just going out and, and perpetually making actions that don't actually benefit your business, uh, you know, or move the needle that also mm -hmm. isn't very helpful. So I think, um, I really do. I love, I love what you said there, the way you described it. I think, I think it's so important for people in the, in the business world to understand, like, yes, take action. But at the end of the day, like, you know, your, your actions need to be founded in the reality of the business that you're operating. And, and so it's mm -hmm. kind of, there's uh taking action doesn't, <laughs> doesn't overcome, you know, the, the lack of reality or understanding of what you're doing. So I, I think that's, um, a great are you point. familiar with backing into a goal, like the process of backing into a goal? Um, I have not, I've not heard it referred to that way, but I tell, tell me what you mean. Okay. So backing into a goal is essentially determining what it is that you want first and then figuring out what exactly I need so I can get there as quickly and as yeah. comfortably, let's say, as possible, instead of zigzagging all over the place until I eventually yeah. land somewhere. You know, there's a lot of people in business that they're I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? What's the goal? Oh, I don't know. We're just selling. We're just selling stuff. And it's like, well, what is the goal? Do you want to sell a yeah. hundred thousand? Do you want to sell a million? Do you want to yeah. sell a hundred million? Knowing where you're trying to get to yeah. will completely change the strategy that you're going to develop. If my goal mm -hmm. was to make a dollar right now, I mean, I walk across the street and ask one of my friends for a dollar and I made my dollar. My dollar is done. Okay, goal achieved. Now, if my goal is I want to make $10 million, I'm going to need a different strategy, mm -hmm. right? I'm yep. going to need to, I'm going to have to start really thinking, okay, how am I going to make $10 million? Should I sell a property? Can I start a business? How long is it going to take me if I started a business from scratch? I'm going to work through all these questions to determine, okay, what is the quickest way for me to make $10 million? If I had to make $10 million right now, now another question is what do I want the $10 million for? Right? Yeah. Like what do I want the $10 million for? Okay. I want the 10 million. Let's say I wanted it to, uh, to buy a house. Right? Well, maybe I don't need 10 million to buy a house. Maybe I, I came up with the thought I need 10 million to buy this house. So let's say it's a $10 million house. You really don't need 10 million to buy a house. You need the down payment to buy the house. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you need to cover the carrying costs, the mortgage insurance and all those things. But that number is not, is also not $10 million. So right. let's say it's a hundred thousand a month. Now my goal just went from, I need 10 million to I need a hundred thousand a month. What's, what's easier to get a hundred thousand a month or 10 million, a hundred thousand a month. Yeah. Right. So you see how I start navigating to a different, mm -hmm. uh, so I can get really clean and lean on what it is I need to achieve. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's, yeah. It's, it's essentially another example of, of the process, but backing into a goal. If I know exactly what I'm trying to get, it becomes so much easier to get there as opposed to, you know, one of the ways I describe it to my, to, to some of the people that I coach, I'm like, okay, let's pretend there's a wall in front of us and we all have darts and we, we just start throwing darts at the wall. 
the, the darts are going to start entering the wall, all different areas of, 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 of the wall, right? It's, there's going to be no pattern. No one's aiming at anything. But if I walked over to that wall and I drew a big circle and I said, everybody aim for this, you're going to see mm -hmm. concentration. You're going to see the darts a lot closer to that circle. Why? Yeah. Because we know what we're trying to hit, right? It's a, there's a big yeah. difference between just throwing darts at the wall or saying, hey, guys, we're trying to hit this circle. Will, will all the darts end up in the circle? No. Will they be a lot closer than previous? Absolutely. Yeah. That's why it's so important to know what we're trying to do. Yeah, for sure. You know, starting with the end in mind, I think, and then and then reverse engineer. I mean, you can use even the just the example related to your business, right? If you're if you're thinking about this, okay, I'm gonna I wanna exit this at X dollars in this many years. Okay. What is what does this business sell for in multiples? Okay, that's how much I need to have as my my uh, EBITDA or whatever yep. business term you want to use. But you have I to. I did all that. I did all yeah, that. Right. So I you just like, look at that. How many customers like, do I need? How yep. much do I need to be making? How, what does my footprint need to look like? What does my net profit need to look like? What kind of procedures and practices do I have to have in place? Everything was. I said, you know, I knew that at the you know, at the end, closer to the end of the book, I knew that my goal was 37 million. And you'll mm -hmm. see how I got to exactly 37 right. million based on everything that I did. And it's like, I hit the goal. I knew what the goal was. Yeah. It could yeah. have easily been 20 million if I had no idea. If I didn't say I want 37, it would have, could have easily been 20. And maybe I would have been happy with that, you know? Right, right. Yeah, no, I, 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 I love... Uh... I don't know. I like math. <laughs> I guess a, a bit of a math nerd. I always have been. I, but but I like how um, practical and definitive it is. It's just like the the math. Yes, people can like manipulate things in in on spreadsheets and what. But ultimately, at the end of the day, like you can build those formulas to get you. You know, if you have thirty seven million at the end, you can just reverse engineer those formulas to get where you need to from in, in knowing. And then, but you still, like you said before, you still have to know what goes into building those formulas and, and what goes into achieving those things in, in, um, uh, in a business. So it's, it's having your plan and then, you know, moving forward and take action. So I think it's great. <clears throat> what, what does someone do after exiting you know, having a, a hugely successful exit like that, what do, maybe not, what does someone do? What does, what do you do after, you know, since exiting, what, what, what kind of, uh, I'm sure you didn't just stop. I don't, I know people don't just do something like that and yeah. then say, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess I've done it for my life. It, it was actually pretty interesting what happened. Like looking back on it, I, I thought it was very comical. So, so here's what I did. When I sold my business, I lived in a 1200 square foot house that I bought for $107,000. Okay. I lived in a very, very modest neighborhood. Um, and I had envisioned what it was going to be like, you know, like going on a yacht and being in Europe and all this yeah. shit. Right. Dude, I got right back to work. I didn't, even, I don't even, I didn't enjoy any of it. I just got right back to work. I bought a metal recycling company started working 14 hours a day and um, doing the same thing I did with the other one. Like I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to grow in another industry. I could do this in any industry. Right. Yeah. So I started doing that for a while and I'll never forget one of my neighbors. Cause I was in this, in this, I bought a, a, a metal recycling business and one of the neighbors comes over to me. He's like, Hey man, I heard that you sold your, your business for $37 million. Is that true? And I'm like, yeah. He said, he tells me, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> it's like, why are you here? You're like, you should, if I had $37 million, I wouldn't be caught dead here. And I started laughing. I was like, dude, I like working, you know, like I enjoy this, whatever. But I went home that day and I started thinking, I was like, what the hell am I doing? Why did I jump right back in the saddle? Right. So I made a decision and I, and I said, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to do this anymore. I, I sold the business. I kept the land rented it to actually that guy for a lot of money. And I kind of said, all right, I'm going to chill. You know, I'm going to chill. I started flying all over the world with some of my friends and uh, having really nice vacations and things of that nature. But I got bored. I got very, very bored. And 
I invest in some real estate. I have now, I think, 12 restaurants, a bunch of things. You know, I do loans and things like that. Nothing yeah. too exciting. It's all boring, but it's purposely done that way. I invest in boring things so I can have more freedom, right? And mm -hmm. during COVID, when I was extremely bored, is when people kept suggesting, hey, write the book, write, write, you should write a book about this. And that's when I started writing the book. So to answer your question, at first I wrote, excuse me, at first I worked like an idiot. <laughs> and then, uh, then I realized I shouldn't work that hard. Then I wrote the book and, um, and now I'm here, man. I, I, I like to work, dude. I like, I like, I like projects, you know? Yeah. I like projects and I like fixing things. I think that's something that never leaves you. And there's a saying that I really love, which is success is never final. You know, no. you don't win and then it's done. You, you win and then you go on to your next win and your next win and your next win. I think that you should definitely take time to smell the roses and enjoy your life, but you always need something to look forward to or to work on because if not, you know, stagnation, you know, it'll kill you. you know? So yep. these days I, I maintain busy, a lot of things like this, like this podcast and stuff like that keeps me busy when I'm not working on things. But look, as soon as I leave from here, I'm, we, we bought another restaurant. I'm going to, well, as soon as this podcast is over, I'm going to go to the new restaurant and start setting that up. Yeah. Fun. Business, it could be fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like people that, you know, people that, that have the success that you did for the reasons that you did, right? You, you built the, it wasn't like an inherited, like you built a company and, mm -hmm. and successfully exited, you know, you, you you enjoy that process and you enjoy the growth that comes with it and all of that. So I think, I think it makes a ton of, ton of sense that uh, it, it so makes sense to me that you would get right back to work. It's maybe not the right, right, the right decision, I guess, maybe, but it makes sense that, you know, you want that in your life. Here, here's the, here's the deal. And here's what, cause I didn't, after I sold my business, I stayed living in that $107,000 house that I owned for almost, <laughs> Four years, I think. Everybody thought I was crazy. Like this fucking guy lives in a <laughs> this little tiny house. He's got yeah. forty million dollars in the bank, right? And people were always baffled by that. And I said, "Listen, you guys are baffled because you don't know why I sold the business. I didn't sell it for money. I sold it for freedom. Yeah, right. I don't care how big my house is. I didn't care." If I had a Ferrari or not, I, I wanted to just be free. And when I had my business, I was so obsessed with it. And I think in order for your business to be successful, you need to be obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. um, that I just was like, man, I, if I don't sell it, I'll never be able to relax. I'll never be free. Right. I was like married to the business. So I sold it. One of the main reasons was for that. I was like, I want a break. Mm -hmm. I'd done it for a long time. and. I was making a lot of money, but I was also tired, man. It, I, I told one of, one of my buddies, he had asked me like, oh, why'd you sell it? I said, well, I'm not having fun anymore. And he's like, how could you not be having fun? I said, well, first of all, I did it for 15 years. And second of all, I was so like, the business was such a big part of me as an individual that if I lost a customer, I had 6,500 customers. If you told me, hey, Max, there's an old lady that we only make $10 a year off of. And she's switching to another company. It would affect me. I'd toss and turn. I'd be like, why did she <laughs> yeah. switch companies? What do we got to do to get her back? Give her free propane. Call her. I'd send a sales rep. I'd send another sales rep. If that didn't work out, I'd go myself. Like, it, w it didn't matter the size of the customer. It was just like, I don't want to lose customers. I want everybody to be happy, which is a big part of my success, right? Making sure that sure. people were happy. Yeah. But it wasn't a way to live. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you're not going to please yeah. everyone. You, you can't, you can't. Yeah. So I said, you know what? The day that I sell this and it's no longer my responsibility, I'll be able to relax. And that's exactly what I, you know, what I did. And that was the reason why I did it. And that was also the reason why I didn't sell the business and go buy a yacht and, you know, go party. Cause I just didn't care. That wasn't the objective. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that, that makes a ton of sense. Um, let me ask you the questions that I ask every guest. So I don't keep you here all day and I got to get, get to another restaurant. Um, 
first one is based on the name of the show being know your why. So, so what is your why? And I imagine it's evolved over time, but you know, what, what's, uh, you know, can, te- can tell us from the beginning, can te- whatever, but I, I, I just like to know kind of when people get, you know, reach these levels of success, what, what keeps you going? What keeps you motivated? I know you've talked about some of that, but, um, you know, maybe if you want to expand a little bit, that'd be great. Yeah, it changes. It, it's always evolving. I mean, today it's different than it was six months ago and sure. and six months before that. Like I'm always changing because I'm always aiming at a new thing. So, you know, dur- during and after COVID, all I did was fish. And I got some major opportunities, multi, multi-million dollar opportunities during that time that I turned all of them down. And when people kept asking me, like, why aren't you doing this? Why, aren't, why would you not take this opportunity to gift? Whatever. I'd say, because then I can't do whatever it is I want. And they said, well, what is it you want to do? I said, I want to fish all day. <laughs> right? So if I take this opportunity, yeah, I might make a couple more million dollars, but I can't fish. And I don't need a couple more million dollars, yeah. but I do need the peace and tranquility of fishing. And take it a step further, you also don't need millions of dollars to go fishing all day long. You need a boat right. and some bait. And more importantly, you need the time to be able to go fishing. And if I commit to these things, I lose the time. So during that time, I said, absolutely not. I'm not, you know, I'm picking fishing over everything. Um, now, so right now, I was talking to some friends of mine, uh, maybe, I don't know, a month ago about their projects and how much money they're making, things like that. And I said, you know, I have a very large net worth, but I don't feel like I make enough cash, right? I have a lot of real estate. So it's like Mm -hmm. slow moving, very boring businesses, you know, loans, very slow, very boring. I said, no, I want to make more money, more cash flow. And I'm already in the restaurant business and I've identified that as a good potential to increase cash, right? So, and specifically, I said, I want to fly only private, right? That's my, that's the goal that I'm, that's really Mm -hmm. the metric that I'm using. I want to fly only private. So I want to create, and I could do it now, just to be clear, I could do it now. But the way I, I do things, and you'll, you'll, you'll read it in my book. I think I write it in the back of the book. I, I write. Every time I have a new goal. So let's say I wanted a, a Ferrari. I have the money to buy a Ferrari right now. I can buy 20 Ferraris right now. But I won't use that money. I'll say, I'm going to create a new income stream that will pay for that Ferrari. And that's my reward system. It's something I do for myself. It always keeps me on check. I never, you never lose with this system, right? Because you're yep. constantly creating a new source of revenue, a new source of income. For whatever my toys that I want or whatever it is. So in this particular case, the flying private thing, I said, okay, I'm going to create that revenue. I just decided this is it. I'm going to create that revenue through restaurants or whatever other avenues I have. I have other businesses that I'm involved in also. But I want to create the revenue and then I'm going to get that income and say that pays for my airfare. Right? Mm -hmm. I could use old money. I could use current money. Yep. I don't do that. It's just a like a fun game that I've done. I've been doing it since I was a kid and it's always served me well because you constantly increase assets. You constantly increase the amount of money that you're making. And you know, it's just like, it's a great thing. It's like, you know what? It doesn't let me get lazy. It doesn't let me get lazy. It doesn't let me rest on my laurels. It's like, dude, you want that? Go out and work for it. Go make Mm -hmm. some money, go make something happen and then reward yourself. Right? So I always do that. And that's what I'm doing right now. So right now, Get this restaurant, probably get a couple more, and then say, whatever this makes, I, pr- I promise you, dude, I'll get 100% of the money. It's like, this is for Jeff. <laughs> this is for yeah. the Jeff. Done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I don't do it, I won't do it. And if I don't yeah. do it, I won't do it. But that'll keep me motivated to like, I got to make this happen. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, I mean, it takes, it takes discipline to do that. It takes, it takes discipline to do that. And it, but like that philosophy could literally be applied you don't have to be you know you don't have to have sold a 37 million dollar company like this philosophy yeah. could apply to everyone yeah. we talk about all this all the time with like our our real estate and like like with passive investing it just whether it's passive or active creating that additional income stream to 
fund the things that you want rather than buying the things that you want and having it deplete your current income stream. And it's just, that's it. That's, it's just switching that, uh, that mindset, that way of looking at, you know, finances, just, you just essentially, again, you're start, you're looking at the end. This is the thing I want. What do I do to, to put in place to, cr to create the funds to, to have that thing I want? And, and to your point, I, I literally did this as a child. I had a tin can that I saved money in. And if I wanted a pair of sneakers and I had the money in that can, I'd say, I need to go make the money for the sneakers. I wouldn't reach into my savings and, and buy the sneaker. I'd say, no, no. I need, and I don't know where I got that from, but I got it. And I still yeah. use it today. I'm like, I'm going to just constantly be raising the bar for myself so that I'm constantly creating and not depleting all of your, your capital. Because I've seen people do this. all. I know people, I know a lot of people who have made a lot of money. And I will tell you, a lot of them don't have that money. Okay? They, they spend yep. it. They buy boats, they buy cars, they eat shit, yeah. they buy clothes, vacation, boom, 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 boom. And it's like, dude, you're spending the capital, the main seed that you have. Yeah. You're, you're tarnishing it. You, you can, you know, the way that I explain it to people is I use like avocado or mango analogy because I think it's appropriate. I'm like, if you have a tree that gives mangoes, you can eat off that tree for the rest of your life. But if you cut the tree down for firewood on a cold night, you're fucked. There's no more mangoes. And that is the same yep. way that this works. You get that money and you burn it. It's burned. You burned it. There's no more mangoes for you, my friend. You got to get yep. that initial capital and make sure it goes to work for you, whether it's in real estate or a business or whatever it is. Let that money produce for you what it produces Go ahead and feel free to spend it. Throw it away. Burn it if you want to. Next month, yep. you'll get more. But if you get the initial seed and you burn it and you waste it, well, you're starting all over again. You're getting right back in line. Now you got to go to work, yep. figure out some strategy so you can plant a seed, grow a tree that's going to give you some fruit. And, you, and how, how long is that going to take? That's right. a pain in the ass. Right. Why don't we just not eat the – why don't we just not cut the tree down for right. firewood and figure yeah. it, something else out? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The, the tree takes a while to grow. So, so mm -hmm. don't chop it down when you, once you've got it. And I, th I think exactly. that's, I, I think you're right. A lot of people do that. They get, you know, they maybe even come from uh, humble beginnings and they suddenly figure out a way to make some money and they just, you know, get into that spending mode. I mean, hear about it all the time with, you know, professional athletes and things like that. They make tens, hundreds of millions of dollars in their career. And then, you know, look at them now and they, it, it like literally broke and it doesn't, yeah. I know a lot of them. I know a lot of professional athletes have gotten big yeah. money, personal friends of mine yeah. that are hurting because they did exactly that. Hey, we're going to buy this and this and this and buy, 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 buy. Yeah. And then at the end of it, it's like, okay, bro, well, you can't go back into the NFL. Right. No one's giving right. these huge checks anymore. What do you do now? Go right. get a job. Like that sucks. You know what it is to hit that peak of excellence in your career, yeah. make all this money and then have to go back to work again. This sucks. Yeah. You yeah. got to have it, some willpower and say, okay, let me think this through. Can I, yeah. am I okay having one Ferrari, right? Like you right. don't have to have five, right. you know? Yeah. So if you have that initial nest egg and it could be 500 bucks, if you have 500 bucks, don't go buy Doritos and video games. Hold on to it. Maybe mm -hmm. get it to a thousand, two thousand, find an opportunity, dude. Find something you can buy and sell or someone who's investing into something. Hey, can I invest alongside of you? It's someone that you trust, obviously. Yeah. You know, make that blossom into something. But if you burn it, you're starting from zero again. Yeah. And that's awesome. 100%. 100% agree. It, it's uh, such a, such a, and again, all, like you said, 500 bucks. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the actual number is, how many zeros it has. It, it's just a, a philosophy to, you know, approaching finances. So yeah. I love that. Um, Max, tell us, tell us something about yourself that isn't common knowledge, a special skill, a hobby, just something to, to let people know you a little better. Sure. So I um, recently became obsessed with tennis. Okay. I love it, man. I don't know how I went 42 years without ever playing tennis, but I just got into it. And I, I'm like obsessed. So I go to play tennis like almost every single day. Uh, I fish a lot, which may or may not be common knowledge. Um, 
I travel. I have three dogs, a girlfriend. Um, I was racing cars for a little while. I don't really do it anymore. Um, I love Teslas. Tesla is my favorite car. Now, I used to be Porsche. I still have one. I had five Porsches before. All the different models. Like I was really into it. <laughs> but after driving the Teslas, I'm like, man, they're so fast. It's it's a hard yeah, proposition. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> You know, you don't need to yeah. have a key. You don't have to pump gas. I mean, all the all the reasons. It's just like, wow, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a hard proposition to be. And they're like seventy five thousand like, dollars. It's not, it's not right. even a lot of money. Like it's hard. Right. So that's yeah, it's funny because all right, I'll tell you a quick story. So I was gonna buy last year a Rolls Royce Cullinan, which is like the little SUV truck, whatever. It's five hundred thousand dollars. So I made the decision I'm buying this car and I'm on YouTube and I'm looking at all the models and all this shit. I'm like, wow, this car's $550,000. And in one of those videos, I come across the Tesla model X and I'll just simply, I said, okay, Cullinan, you have to hire a driver. Model X drives itself. Cullinan, you have to pump gas and go to the gas station. Model X, it charges at home. You don't have to go to the gas station. Uh, Cullinan's pretty fast. Tesla faster, <laughs> yeah. five hundred and fifty thousand. Model X at the time was like a hundred grand, and I just started. And I said, you know what? If this was a business decision, right? If your mm -hmm. ego's not involved, you'd say you'd have to be a dumbass to buy a yeah. Rolls Royce over a Tesla. That's those are just the facts, right? Yeah. And that's what I did. I bought a Tesla, and I said, okay, forget it, because the the, the Rolls Royce just didn't make any sense to me. You know, it's like this is just not a smart decision. And when I sold a lot of my fancy cars and I got really into Tesla, all my friends, which most of them are not surprised, you know, but a lot of them were like, you got rid of that car. You got, rid of oh man, I can't believe it. I'm like, <laughs> use your brain, bro. Use your brain. Yeah. Do the math. Do the yeah. math. It is, you have to be dumb. I'm not going to have a yeah. $250,000 911 turbo when I can have a $75,000 car that outperforms it. I mean, in a straight line, I don't know track, but. Yeah. It's just, it's a hard proposition to beat, you know? So yeah. I don't know. That's a little bit about me. I'm, I'm still very like, you know, I don't, I don't wear watches. I don't wear Rolexes or anything. I don't wear any jewelry. I am super simple guy. I'm like the most simplest guy ever. I eat at home almost every day, work out as often as possible, but I'm like yeah. the most simplest, most relaxed guy in the world. I don't spend a lot of money. There's just not a lot of things. I, I give away more money than I spend. I will tell you that with almost 100% certainty. Like I give away right. a lot of money, but I don't spend it. It's just weird. You know? It's just who I am. Yeah, I, I think so. that's inherently just sometimes that's who you are. So I, yeah. I think it's, you know, whether you <laughs> whether you've made it or, or not, I think, you know, some people people haven't made a lot of money and, and feel they have to have, you know, the, the fanciest car and all of that. So I, I mm -hmm. think um, well, a lot of times the it's analogy just... I gave my buddy the other day, as we were talking about, they're making fun of me. One of my best friends, he's always makes fun of me because he says I don't spend enough money. And, but he has like $40,000 Rolex, all these badass cars. And I have more money than him, a lot more money than him. And I said, you know, the difference between me and you is the following. I don't have all the fancy cars and, and all those stupid flashy jewelry, but when the check comes for the, at the restaurant, I don't even fucking look at it. Yeah. And you guys are doing the math of who had the cheesecake and who drank the two sodas. <laughs> yeah. And the bill could be three, $4,000. And I just throw my card and that's it. I don't even look at the bill because I'm free, but yeah. you're spending all your money on watches and bullshit. And then when the bill comes, you're who got the apple pie? Who the, and it's like no, bro. You you have it backwards. You have it backwards. Yeah. I do whatever I want. I go to a store. I don't care. I don't look at the price tag if there's something that I want. You're looking at price tags. You're doing math. I mean, that's where you're messed up, dude. Because you're trying to show everybody how much you have, right? You're you're putting on this show with the jewelry and all the BS. And I don't do that because I don't feel I have the need to do that. I don't need to tell people that I'm rich or show people that I'm rich. Like that doesn't make any sense to me, you know? Yeah. So no, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, when people hear this and they want to reach out to you, what's, what's the best way? I'm pretty active on Instagram. Instagram yeah. is like the, the, what I would say I use the most. If you send me a message, I'll get back to you. Okay. Perfect. Final question for you, Max. What, what piece of advice would you give to someone who is, 
they want to get started. They hear your story. They're inspired. They maybe want to get into business or real estate or something. Like what, what would you tell them as, you know, kind of some initial steps? Well, I always tell everybody, cause I have a lot of people who reach out to me for coaching and I tell them first step is read the book, read the book, man. I wrote the book for a reason. I wrote the book to help people. I don't yep. sell a course. I'm not selling anything other than a book, which you don't make money off of books. Trust me. It's not, a, it's not a money making business. Yeah. So I always tell people, you know, read the book, learn from there, get inspired from there. Secondly, I'd say do some work on yourself on thinking time. Practice with that. Practice with that. Ask yourself, like, so one of my favorite questions I love, one of the favorite, I love, love, love this question is if I could start over knowing what I know today, what would I do differently? Right. And you can apply that yeah. to anything. Like you said earlier, the thinking time is universal relationship, mowing your lawn, business, whatever you can apply thinking time to anything. So I would say, you know, read the book and practice with thinking time, come up with your own questions, find some quality questions and really get clear on what it is that you're trying to accomplish, whether it's personal business or otherwise. And, um, you know, just, I, I think that it's just such a valuable tool, man. I think that's the most important thing you could probably do. Get clear on what it is that you're trying to accomplish, do the work and, uh, and make it happen, man. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. It's not too complicated. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not actually that complicated. Yeah. Um, well, Max, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate your time today. I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your story with uh, myself and our listeners. Absolutely, man. My pleasure, Jason. And maybe I'll be in, uh, San Diego, probably the end of March, early April. If you're around, maybe we'll go get that taco together. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would be awesome. Um, <laughs> folks listening, I know you're going to get a ton of value out of this and hearing Max's story. Please like, rate, and review the show so we can get more great guests. Um, and thank you all for listening. Hey there, I am Dr. Jason Ballara, and this is the Know Your Why podcast, where we explore the why behind success. Every week, I meet with real estate investors, veterinary entrepreneurs, mindset coaches, authors, and fitness professionals to uncover their why and how it drives them on the winding road to success. What is your why?